Five Questions with Leroy Butler. Now, here's Tom Silverstein. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Five Questions with Leroy Butler, the season ender, yeah. the final 30, as they say in journalism. This is our last show of the 2020 season. And we got a lot to talk about. I mean, a lot of things have yeah. happened. Um, I wanted to kick off with uh, the Hall of Fame election. Uh, yeah. You were close. And from what you know, most people are saying, you were darn close. And they're pretty hopeful for next year. What were your thoughts on it? Well, I tell you this, uh, Tom, and you know this. You know, last year was amazing being the first year uh, finally, we were able to go down to my, Miami with my wife, um, and we had a ball. And, and I knew it last year was going to be a long shot because I don't know what they go by numbers or what. I don't know. But this year was a little bit different because of the pandemic. And I thought about being grateful and God is good just to be a finalist again. And then I thought about it. I was like, well, you know, maybe this is an opportunity there's always one upset in that five. Maybe I will be that one. But when I got the call from Mr. Baker, he always starts it out like this time. He'll say, unfortunately, said, okay, <laughs> I'll see you next year. And then we start laughing. He said, you say that every year. I said, it's funny. So, because I don't want him to go through the whole speech and you should be there. And I just want to make it easier for him. Yeah. So after that, I was... I was going to have the same attitude whether I made it or not because I'm a very measured person. But I started to think about it. I said, you know what? I, I wonder if I made the last 10. Because that would be a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. Because you would think that you're getting very close. And then when I found out that I was, you know, made the top 10 and then maybe a few guys allegedly hit me in their last five, I said, oh, well, that put a big smile on my face, Tom, because to think about being part of, you know, out of all these players in this league, you're down to that last 10, and eventually you'll get in the last five, I think is amazing. But I wanted to end the anxiety for uh, the fan base and the Packer fan base mm -hmm. just to say I didn't make it, and that's when I had spoke to you about it. Matter of fact, I, told, I spoke to you first, and you tweeted out, you know, I think people know that about me, though. I wasn't going to be all, you know, because I Chris Carter told me that I think after his third time he didn't make it, he was just going off on people and just, mm -hmm. he said, took him four more years. So he said, "Don't do what I did. Just be yourself." And but it, but it's always an honor. But next year is in L.A. Hopefully the Packers could be in the Super Bowl. Who knows? Rodgers wins another MVP. And everything will be great. So, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, you look at it now, and everybody from every all decade team is in the Hall of Fame except you. And so, you because I'm friends with you, you don't think that's got nothing to do with it, is it? Well, it could be a knock. Yeah, you might want to um, <laughs> discredit me on, disown me on Twitter. Might no, not be a bad not. idea. No, 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 no. I love so, your haircut, by the way. I love your haircut. You need uh, a more reputable uh, people around you. Well, anyway, um, you know, just my own personal view that if John Lynch is in the Hall of Fame, uh, there's no way you cannot be. But that's that's just my opinion. And um, congratulations on making the, the top 10. And like you said, there's always next year. Yes. Yeah. So let's let's uh, transition over to the Packers, who all who fell short of their goal of making it to the Super Bowl. And of course, we've already talked about that and a lot of the things um, you know that went into that. But there's a lot that's happened since then. Yeah, Most wow. notably, they fired their special teams coach Sean Menenga and hired uh, their assistant uh, Maurice Drayton, who has a very good reputation. He was actually hired by Mike McCarthy in 18 and uh, was thought to be someone who was going to be in line for a special teams job somewhere else. So uh, they made that move and then they fired Mike Pettin and the search was on for a defensive coordinator. And and when you heard they, they fired Pettin, what were your thoughts? Well, because it, 
if Tom, you know, we had talked about this uh, earlier that he didn't sign that extension. I don't know why he wanted to be a lame duck uh, coordinator, but he chose not to. So I knew it was going to be some differences. And if you look at, you know, the way the defense played down the stretch, they could not stop Tampa. Yeah, I knew it was going to be amicably parting ways. And then you're thinking, well, do they like the system? Do LaFleur like that system? Uh, will he go to a 4-3 system? A 4-3 system, Tom, that's what's in the Super Bowl. That's what played in the Super Bowl. Both of those defenses are 4-3 defense. Now, they got great personnel on both sides, but still – at some point, you got to find out not fall in love with the person, but fall in love with the system. That's why when I saw Jim Leonard was one of the, the candidates, um, what did you think? I wanted to text you and find out what did you think when he had a second interview. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe he had the job, but I got some more thoughts on it. But can you tell me what you thought about it? Yeah, Um so I was not surprised. Jim Leonard has been a hot name around the college and pro ranks. Uh, in last year, he and Sean McVay were supposed to talk at the Rose Bowl uh, about the Rams job, but um, McVay had interviewed Brandon Staley and Staley knocked the interview out of the park. And so they never wound up talking. Mm -hmm. uh, I think LaFleur got a ton of references on Leonard. You know, this is a guy you got to talk to. But I think they all he also knew that they would be starting over. I mean, Leonard was going to have to con construct a uh, pro defense. It's different playing college than it is pro. No and, you know, you got to learn the players. You have to learn the schemes, the different schemes that are going on. And he's been working in college. So it would have been a transition. I don't know specifically whether Leonard was offered the job. I think there was discussions about, okay, this is what it would be. This is how much you would make. Are you interested? And then it would have been up to LaFleur, I guess. But it, there's a little bit of conflicting reports on that, so I'm not sure who to believe. Uh, either way, Leonard decided he wanted to stay at UW. And yeah. You know, I mean, that's his alma mater. He's a three-time All-American there. He's probably going to be the head coach there. So, I, you know, what it, what were your thoughts in terms of um, what the defense would be if he were the coordinator? Well, that would mean they would keep a 3-4 type scheme. And I thought about it further, if that's the case. And I, First on Leonard, first, I didn't think he was ready to do that. I don't know why people fans think it's a guy's dream just because he grew up a Green Bay Packer to work for them or to be a coordinator. Because it's different when you're in the Big Ten and you can put together a top ten, top five defense, you can win nine or ten games every year. That's not good enough with the Packers. They need a defense that can get them to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Because remember, you're replacing Pettit, who went to the NFC Championship game twice. They didn't play very well on defense. But it is what it is, and he was a top nine defense, top ten defense. Okay, put that to a side. I just think that money is not the issue. And uh, based on what uh, Tom Oates, a good friend of mine, saying, you know Tom Oates, Tom mm -hmm. Oates said that he was offered the job and the money was kind of a wash. But moving further, I just think that he needs to stay a college coach, really, because you're dealing, different, you're dealing with grown men in the NFL, not recruits. You can shape your defenses, you know, in Wisconsin. Uh, you you got to basically coach who you want to coach in the NFL. So when I heard that they split, I wasn't surprised by that. Now, I was surprised by by uh, Barry, but when I looked a little bit deeper into it, Tom, I guess they had – he was very familiar with Barry. Uh, but I thought that, you know – Jerry Gray would have a great opening here to be a candidate that would get more of a a shot to be that coordinator because he's done it before. But I guess relationships matter. But if you look at, to be fair, if you look at Barry, where he came from, Tommy, you know more about this than me, his defenses weren't very good. And so, I mean, and you're filling some big shoes. So I don't know how exciting you know, guys are going to be 
when they see that. But the good thing about it, he can be able to come in and shape the defense how he wants it. He can do a 3-4 or a 4-3 and do whatever he wants. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, so uh, he settled on Joe Barry. It came down after um, Leonard pulled himself out of the race. It came down to Joe Barry, the um, assistant head coach linebackers for Brandon Staley, who I mentioned earlier, who after one year as coordinator of the Rams was hired as the Chargers head coach. So he went with Staley to the Chargers. Uh, the other, another candidate was Ajiro Ivro, who is the safeties yep. coach for the Rams. And then yet another was Chris Harris, secondary coach for Washington. Probably a lot of people remember he was a cornerback for the Chicago Bears way back when. And, um, you know, from what I understand is that uh, LaFleur wanted the defense that the Rams ran last year. And that has its roots in the defense that Vic Fangio, the longtime defensive coordinator, Packers fans know him really well. He was the architect of those San Francisco 49er defenses that dominated mm -hmm. and then came to Chicago and was part of a number one defense there and then got the Denver Broncos head coaching job. So uh, the scheme is a 3-4 scheme. It's It really has a lot of roots in some of what, in what uh, the Don Capers Pittsburgh Steelers defense does. But he's much more about um, changing up fronts, um, disguising coverages, things like that. And I think LaFleur wanted someone who could install that defense, and he felt like uh, Barry was ahead of the other two in that regard. Yeah, it just – I mean, I guess it, it's not going to wow anybody because when no, he was a coordinator no. in Detroit and, you know – you just, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I wasn't. You have to get somebody you're comfortable with. You really do, because the defense arguably is the reason why you're not in two Super Bowls. So, but I guess they would now if they give Barry full carte blanche to hire everybody he wants, not to keep people. He needs to hire his staff. Because remember, this fan base is on a fast track to win a Super Bowl on Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback. And and I'm not necessarily saying you need to get a big name, which uh, Leonard would have been. I'm just looking about a uh, scheme. So if he's going to go back to a 3-4 scheme, I mean, some people may say, why didn't you just keep at it? Yeah. Yeah, but it's going to be different. It's going to be different in oh, that different. Yeah. Patton was really uh, enamored with dime and nickel packages on yeah. all downs. And I think these guys are going to be more simple on I first like and it. second down. And then third downs when they're going to throw, you know, the kitchen sink at you. I think they want to be more consistent. One of the complaints I heard about Patton was that the players never knew what he was going to call. There was no continuity. So, you know, they had to wait, hear what the call was, instead of lining up and going, we know he's going to call cover three here. You know, he, that's his that's his MO. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, they, need, and, they need some energy, and I think that's what Barry's going to bring. Yeah. Lots of energy. That's what they need on this group. I do, and, and I've gotten a little bit of flack for this on in the – um, emails from the story, and I addressed it in my column, was that, um, you know, he passed up two African-American um, coaches for a guy who's been a coordinator twice before, a white middle-aged coordinator, and um, how is that going to play in the locker room? Because this is a very um, thoughtful, um, I would say, uh, deep-thinking kind of a group. You know, they they had their stuff together when uh, the whole Jacob Blake thing went down and they have strong opinions. And I think it doesn't mean Barry is the wrong guy, but it does mean that uh, he's going to have to prove to those guys that, um, you know, he's the right guy for the job, that he's qualified and competent. Yeah, and I, and I, and I didn't want – 
uh, Jerry Gray uh, to be the next coordinator because he was African American. I thought because I thought he was a better candidate. Mm. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Tampa, they got three coordinators African American and two young ladies. So Bruce Arias, that's what he wanted. He wanted to give those guys and young ladies a chance. Diversity, and, yeah. He wanted the diverse staff to go with yeah, what is a uh, exactly. You know, most you know seventy percent black uh, locker room, and I mean that's the reality of today. Is that how how long are you going to go with the buddy system and not give people chances? Because we see how many young guys, you know, the Zach Taylors and the guy that the Eagles uh, hired and Dan Campbell and you know, and for the enemy and uh, yeah. Byron Leftwich yeah. not to get chances is ridiculous. And Todd Bowles, I would hire him in a New York second. I don't care what happened with the Jets. He just needs a competent general manager around him because that guy has got to be the, the best defensive mind in the NFL. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, that defense turned around. They learned a lot. From when they played Kansas City the first time, they were, you know, down 17 to nothing. They made that game 27-24. But you could see, you know, everything was around how that defense played. So Tom Brady, you think of whether you like him or not, he beat, you know, Drew Brees, you know, Aaron Rodgers, and Patrick Mahomes, you know, on the way to the Super Bowl. And you can always say he had a great defense, number one against the run. And you just look at the way guys play. And I think you're right about that. I'm not sure um, – why uh, you would ever get uh, looked at a certain way for telling the truth. Because we have to be honest, the Rooney rule is a joke, and it hasn't benefited anybody. So the most qualified, just sometimes just giving a guy a chance can really make your team go to another level. And I think that's the reason why you look at a team like Tampa Bay, Bruce Arians widely said, this is what I want. I want a, I want a little bit more diversity. So, but – they're going to have to figure out a way to get this defense back on track. And that's why I was shocked that they even signed somebody this, this close without knowing if Kevin King is coming back, which direction of the defense you're going to go. I mean, it's just a lot of things you got to do on this defense. Yeah, I, I think in this system, they're okay with, with the type of player they have. The outside linebackers, they're going to use them all over the place. You know, they'll still move – um, Zadarius Smith over the center, they're going to shift a lot. You know, if, if you think about the Rams, think about how, and in fact, we detailed this, how hard it was to find Aaron Donald on the front. You know, they moved him around so much and yeah. had so many different um, gaps covered and fronts and coverages that were different. Um, you know, they were playing this cover six, which I had never even heard of. Uh, where you play quarters on one side and and cover two on the other, I mean that's that's high level stuff. So you know the Packers can do that. Uh, they the one position I do think they got upgrade is inside linebacker. You look at all those great teams that Fangio had. Yep. They had Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman yep. and Roquan Smith. Yep. You know you got to have inside linebacker. Yeah, and I, one more other thing I think Barry will change. They won't do left and right corners. I think you'll see Jair Alexander follow the top guy because that's what they did with the Rams. And most teams do that if you got a premium quarterback like Jair Alexander. You know, let him follow their number one and see what happens, you know, especially if you're going to do combination coverages, you know, four and two like you said. But if a guy moves, you stay to that side. You need a guy that's smart enough to know – you know, where I'm going, where's my help going. So maybe that'll be some positives out of this. But, but what are you going to say, though, if this defense take a back step and they're like number 28th? Well, the then, they gotta, then they got to try someone else. I mean, I it, it can't – he's got to get this right. He absolutely has to get this right. And he picked someone he's familiar with who he thinks yep. can install that defense. Yep. And that, it's he's going to live or die with that, you yep. know, and – and if, if they stink next year, if they're 32nd, like they were under Barry and Detroit, yeah. um, you know, then he'll have to make a move. But, you know, time is running out, and uh, he, he needs to be right on this one. 
I, I do want to address one other thing um, before we take off. And that is, you know, one of the things that was really uh, in interesting to me was that in the Super Bowl, Kansas City could not block Tampa. I mean, they, their two offensive tackles were missing. Yeah. And it was just a disaster. They just could not block them. And I think to what the Packers had, and their philosophy of building on the offensive line, I think they got to keep that up. I think that's what wins Super Bowls now is being able to protect your quarterback. Yeah, you got to get a right tackle because you don't know if Wagner's going to be there. He was banged up. You got that's why they took Runyon, you know, to keep building that up. Corey Lindsley, you know, he may, you may lose him. I mean, some team may give him a lot of money. I'm not sure if the franchise tag with that tag will start to come down a little bit because you could have used the franchise tag on Aaron Jones, but that would have been like 10 million. I may go down to eight. You don't know. So there's a lot of things going on in this offense. Remember, they were the number one offense. So if you can't protect Aaron Rodgers, then it's going to be tough. Just like you, they couldn't protect Mahomes, to your point. But two things real quick that I want to say before we get out of here. Guarantee Aaron Rodgers the next two years his contract. Try to rework his deal to get some cap space because they're over. And then another thing I would do that no one's really talking about but me, I would definitely extend Matt LaFleur another two years because I need to have him in the position to where he can see these last few years of Aaron Rodgers out and be comfortable to see Jordan Love transition in in another three years. And then at that point, you get your cap space. You can do whatever you want. But, again, you have another chance to address the defense in the draft. But not only the draft, put that to a side. Most people think that we had a topic today, do you want to do what the Packers do or do what the Rams do? The Rams don't have a first-round pick – to 2023, but they're trying to go for it. And I think the fan base is excited because they're thinking, well, Tom Brady went to Tampa. The Super Bowl was in Tampa, so maybe that would benefit us. Next year, the Super Bowl and the Hall of Fame, by the way, is in L.A. So that's why L.A. made that trade for Matthew Stafford. They thought they were one quarterback away. But if you're the Green Bay Packers, they're going to get into free agency, but they got to create some cap space first. Yeah, and that's the danger with going going for it all is yeah. that, you know, at some point you won't be able to field a team and you're going to have to go through some bad years. And maybe that is the way to do it. But that's a discussion for uh, uh, maybe our free agency uh, edition, um, possibly the draft. So, I do want to thank our sponsors all year. They've been yeah. Uh My game day brats, of course, um, Pick and Save, pickandsave.com, shoptjc.com. Um, matter of fact, Aaron Rodgers, congratulations to him for getting engaged uh, when he accepts and speaks for his third MVP, which I think he'll want a fourth and a fifth, to be honest with you. Um, so if you need, Aaron, you need a hookup, let me know. I'll get Dean Murray to make sure your wife gets a huge ring. And it was a bullying book. We promoted a bullying book all year. You know, Leroy Butler, uh, Butler versus Bullying Campaign. You can go to LeroyButlerInc.com for more information. But that book is only 10 bucks. So we appreciate that. And we bought our wreath from FrankieWreathCompany.com. And uh, Frankie is David Bottower's wife. So we're excited for her new uh, bit. You can always, they're, 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 they last forever. So you can order them whenever. And hopefully we get a, a Great David Bakhtiari back for 2021. We definitely need him on the offensive line. And Ivanhoe's Pub and Eatery down in Racine, they've been fantastic all year, great sponsors. And last but not least is my Leap Vodka, leapspirits.com. You can go there to find out. what It's selling out everywhere. I mean, it's hard to find. You can find a place to get it, but pick and save, always have everything. And my new cookbook, uh, comes out in another couple of weeks. You can follow me on Twitter at Leap36 and Tom at Tom Silverstein. Stein. And the last thing I want to say is I want to thank the guy that if it wasn't for him, we couldn't do this show, Bill Schultz. Not only is he a great friend, he's by far the best producer I've ever seen because he's been doing this since we've been doing this for years. And he's a guy you may not see but he is ter terrific. I want to thank him. And I also want to thank Olivia. She had to fill in um, last week, and she did an amazing job. So thank you, Olivia. I really appreciate it. And thank you to the fans. I mean, yep. without you guys, 
it wouldn't be a Green Bay Packers because you are our owners. So thank yeah, you. for sure. And uh, we had a blast this year doing it game day and during the week. Yeah. And I look forward to doing that again next year after I sleep for a couple months and <laughs> then we'll get back at it. Um, but it was a blast and I want to thank you for um, doing this as well. It's uh, definitely one of our best features and very popular. So, and to everyone, yep, thanks for thanks for uh, joining us. Be sure you subscribe. Most of you are, and I really appreciate that. Um, we're going to get even stronger in 2021. Yeah. So for that, for myself and Bill and Leroy, we'll see you next time. Bye.